Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, to another chapter of A Court of Silver Flames, written by Sarah J. Moss and read by yours truly, Free Wada, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. Y'all, what a book club. What a book club. You know, something about this... Something about this recap kind of blows, you know? There's just something I can't put my... I can't wrap my head around. And I know there's something that... You know, there's something that I thought kind of sucked last uh, chapter. But I can't really put my finger on it, you know? Y'all might have to rem y'all might have to remind me about that one, but we'll you know we'll press on as we always do. <laughs> maybe we'll get some more training action going on, and maybe see uh, a little bit more in depth about Briallen and Koshe's potential plans on the human continent. <laughs> but other than that, I don't I definitely don't remember what happened last chapter. So let's jump back right into it. Into chapter 27. Nesta hadn't the faintest idea how she'd look Cassian in the face the next morning, but Gwen provided a buffer she was all too eager to use. She met the priestess on the steps up to the training pit, and Gwen offered her a bright smile. Morning. Morning, Nesta said, falling into step with her. Anything on the trove? Gwen shook her head. She still wore her robes, though she'd taken to tying back her hair in a tight braid. I even asked Meryl last night. She broke through that glamour, but beyond a few mentions in old texts, she couldn't find anything more than what you already know. Not a hint about when or where they were lost or who lost them. We can't even uncover who last possessed them, since it's information that goes back at least 10,000 years. It was always a shock to remember just how old the Fae were, how old Amran must be, to have remembered the dread, dread trove objects when they were still free in the world. But apparently even Amran had no memory of who had last used them. Nesta shoved away the thought of the female and the accompanying cold slice of pain. It might prove an impossible task, Gwen said, mouth twisting to one side. Is there no other way of finding it? There was. It involved bones and stones, Nesta's body locked up. No, she lied. There's no other way. You're going up to Windhaven? Nesta found herself asking Cassian as Gwen bade them farewell at the end of their lesson. Gwen had started on finding stances that morning and had taken enough focus from all of them that Nesta hadn't had a moment to really speak to him alone. There had been one slightly overlong glance when she'd appeared, and that had been it. She had no regrets about what she'd done in the dining room, even if it had been glaringly obvious that Asriel had known what he was interrupting. But standing here alone with Cassian, the taste of him lingered in her mouth, as if he'd branded himself onto her tongue. She'd lain awake in bed last night thinking of every stroke, every sound he had made, still feeling the press of his fingers into her head as he thrust into her mouth. The memory alone had made her slide a hand between her legs, and she'd needed to find release twice before her body calmed enough to sleep. Cassian plucked his jacket from where he'd left it, shrugging into the black leathers and scales. I need to <clears throat> inspect the legions again, make sure they're preparing for possible conflict, and that the recruits are in good shape. Ah, their eyes met, and she could have sworn as darkened, as if remembering every delicious moment from the night before. But she shook her head, clearing away the cobwebs. Gwen's doing well, Cassian said, nodding to the archway where the priestess had disappeared. She's a nice girl. Nesta had learned that Gwen was twenty-eight. Indeed, just a girl to him. I like her, Nesta admitted. Cassian blinked. I don't think I've ever heard you say that about anyone. She rolled her eyes, but he added, It's too bad the other priestesses won't come. Nesta checked the sign-up sheet every day, 
but no one else had added their name. Gwen told Nesta that she'd personally invited a few of the priestesses, but they were too scared, too unsure. I don't know what I can do to encourage them, Nesta said. Keep doing what you're doing. He finished fastening his jacket. A brisk autumn breeze flowed past, bringing with it scents from the city below. Bread and cinnamon and oranges, roast meats and salt. Nesta inhaled, identifying each one, wondering how they could all somehow combine to create a singular sense of autumn. Nesta angled her head as an idea struck her. If you're stopping by Windhaven, can you do me a favor? Cassian stood in Emery's shop and made his best attempt at a non-threatening smile as he laid out the contents of the sack he had carried. Emery peered at what he placed onto her pristine counter. Nesta gave you this. Technically, Nesta had informed him the house had given it to her, but she'd asked the house for these items, intending them to be brought here. She said it's a gift. Emery picked up a brass tin, pried open the top, and inhaled. The smokety, the smoky, velvety scent of tea leaves floated out. Oh, this is the good stuff. She lifted a glass vial of finely ground powder. When she twisted the lid off, a nutty, spicy scent filled the shop. Cumin. Her sigh was like a lover's. She moved to another and another, six glass containers in total. Turmeric, cinnamon, allspice, cloves, and... She peered at the label. Black pepper. Cassian laid the last container on the table, a large mar marble box that weighed at least two pounds. Emery yanked off the lid and let out a laugh. Salt! She pinched the flaky crystals between her fingers. A lot of salt. Her eyes shone as a rare smile flitted across her face. It made her look younger, wiped away the weight and scars of all those years with her father. Please tell her, I say, thank you. He cleared his throat, remembering the speech Nesta drilled into him. Nesta says you can thank her by showing up to training tomorrow morning. Emery's smile wavered. I told her the other day. I, I have no means to attend. She thought you'd say that. If you want to come, send word and one of us will bring you. It'd have to be Rise, but he doubted his brother would object. If you can't stay the full time, that's fine. Come for an hour, before your shop opens. Emery's fingers fell away from the spices and tea. It's not the right time. Cassie knew better than to push. If you ever change your mind, let us know. He turned from the counter, aiming for the door. He knew Nesta had given the gift in part to tempt Emery to join, but also from the kindness in her heart. He'd asked why she was sending these items, and she'd said, Emery needs spices and good tea. It had stunned him, just as it had stunned him earlier to hear her admit that she liked Gwyn. Nesta around Gwyn was a wholly different creature than who she was with the court. They didn't tease or laugh with each other, but an easiness lay between them that he had never witnessed. Even when Nesta was with Elaine, she'd always been Elaine's guardian, or Feyre's sister, or cauldron maid. With Gwyn... He wondered whether Nesta liked the girl because, with her, she was simply Nesta. Perhaps she felt that way around Emery, too. Had she gone into Valaris, night after night, not only to distract and numb herself, but be around people who didn't know the weight of all she had carried? Cassian reached the door, blowing out a soft breath. He'd refused to think of what she'd done to him in the dining room while they'd been training, especially with Gwyn there. But seeing Nesta's tentative smile as she'd shoved the tea and spices into a bag had him suppressing the urge to push her against the wall and kiss her. He had no idea where things stood with them, if they were back to a favor for a favor. She'd given him no inkling about whether she'd let him into her bed or if she'd gotten on her knees to knock him out of the brooding he'd fallen into. If she had, it implied some level of caring about his well-being, didn't it? And pity. Fuck. If she'd sucked them because she pitied him. No, it hadn't been that. He'd seen the desire in her eyes, felt the softness of her mouth on his neck and those initial touches. It had been comfort, given in the only way 
she knew how. Cassian opened the door and looked back, finding Emery still at the counter, her hand resting on the array of spices and tea. Her eyes were solemn, her lips a tight line. She didn't seem aware of his presence, so he took that as his cue to leave and leaped into the skies. Nesta climbed the steps to the training ring, pondering the dread trove. She assumed the others had met with no better luck than she had, and if things were indeed as urgent as Azrael claimed, then perhaps library research wasn't the best route. But her stomach clenched away the other option, to recall what had occurred the first and only time she had scried. Her hand shook as she climbed the last of the steps. She squeezed her fingers into fists, blowing out a steady breath through her nose. Cassian already stood in the center of the ring. He grinned as she emerged. It was a wider grin than his usual ones, excited and pleased. Nesta's eyes narrowed as she stepped into the brightness of the ring. Gwen was already waiting a few feet from Cassian, a smile lighting her own face. And before them, drinking a glass at the water station, stood Emery. And that, my friends was the end of chapter 27. Let's go. We got number two in there. Gwen and Emery. Do we even need anyone else at this point? Gwen and Emery, Nesta all fighting, tag team. Sock, sucking a punch here and there. A little punch here and there. Some stretching exercises to keep their, uh, and conditioning, keep their breath control going strong. I love it. I am here for this. <laughs> Cassian. Oh my gosh, Cassian. I... I know exactly what you mean, dude. You're sitting there thinking over every aspect and being like, oh, is this because of this or that? Or like, should I just play it cool? But I'm not playing it cool, but I got to act like I can play it cool. But also, and then before you know it, you're staring at the wall and people are like, what the heck are you looking at, bro? Because <laughs> you're just caught in your own, your own thoughts about uh, just similar stuff like that. Oh man, Cassian. One, one of these days you'll learn. <laughs> oh, y'all. I'm excited. Let's let's see how... I, I feel like Emery's going to kick some butt. If she's got that Illyrian blood in her, I'm, I'm just excited to see her, Gwen, Nesta, all going at it strong. I'm loving it. Stay, make sure to stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and I'll see y'all in the next chapter.